Palais by Auguste Rodin, made in 1884 to 1895. These are bronze statues. The context for this goes back to our Bayou Tapestry. Do you remember in 1066, there was just fighting between France and England over who had the right to the throne. It was King Harold of England fighting William the Conqueror of France. And do you remember William the Conqueror of France won that fight? Well, that fighting between France and England is like brother and sister that cannot get along. So that fighting continued. And if you can believe this, they had a 100, it was actually 116 year war. And in this war, you may know the character Joan of Arc. She was actually burned at the stake by the British for her fighting and wearing of men's clothing and claiming to be a um, kind of a messenger of God. So the 100 years war uh, with Joan of Arc in it had a special battle here at the city of Calais. And if you can look at this right here, here's Calais. It is a, a, a city right here on the edge of the English Channel. And so it's a, a vital spot for the English and the French. If you want to invade, having Calais would be a great location to have control over. So in three, 1337, the city of Calais was surrounded by the British for a, a year and the, you know, no food goes in, no help goes in. So after a year of ex living through this siege, the people of Calais gave up, they surrendered. And the English said, okay, you surrender, great. If you all wanna survive, you need to send us out six of your burghers, your town leaders. That's what a burger is. And when they come out, we want them to um, have bare heads, bare feet, ropes around their neck, because we're just going to hang them, and around their hands. And uh, bring here, you can see it in this guy's hand, the key to the city. There were actual gates on this city that a key would have worked in. So that context... Um, and I, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to feel the life of a burger leaving the city gates, knowing you're going to be hung. Um, so they they leave the city gates, and the King Edward the Third, you know, is ordering them to be hung. But his wife, Queen Philip Philippa, who happened to be there at the time, she interceded and she said, "Hey, let them go. I'm pregnant, and I can't have these." men who are willing to sacrifice themselves be a burden on my psyche. Uh, this will be bad luck for our unborn child. So they were freed after they went through the excruciating pain of facing their own mortality. So a hundred years, no, not a hundred years later, like, uh, what is it? 400 years later in 1884, the city of Calais said, we want to honor those guys. And they contacted Auguste Rodin and they said, hey, make us a statue honoring these dudes. And the function of this statue is to honor their bravery. It's a memorial to them. Now, um, the final result, though, was that the city of Calais was not very excited about Rodin's sculptures. They wanted something that was heroic in nature and Rodin made something that was realistic in nature. So fun bo bottom function, bottom line function, honor bravery uh, used by the city of Calais to you know, be a memorial, but there's discussion about whether it's a good memorial. So the fo form, this is made of bronze lost wax casting. There, you know, when you make a cast, you can make multiple um, editions of the sculptures. And so there are 12 of these in the world. Um, and they even did them kind of like abbreviated versions. So this is Jean de Air, who is one of the six burghers that left the city. This is his, just his head. And this head was privately owned 
and was um, in one of the Twin Towers at the bombing of the Twin Towers on September 11th. And in 2001, this statue was found a half mile away from the Twin Towers or this head. So this set is in the Brooklyn Museum. And in terms of form, we're talking here about six councilmen who have skeletal bodies that have, you know, lived through a, a one-year um, siege of their city. They're standing together, but they don't interact with one another. Instead, they're kind of placed in this circle, kind of backs to each other. And each of them is in his own personal bubble. And not one of them is the center of focus. Let me go back to that. Not one of these is a center of focus. Now, this is a collection of four of the men. There are six total. Um, and then the arrangement, according to Rodan, was that, hey, I want people to be able to walk up like I was doing right here. This is me. I want people to walk up and look in their eyes and feel like they're part of the group of the burgers. So you can see they're just kind of how they're, Legs are situated, um, not really together, but kind of together. Uh, so they're not much taller than people. I um, And we are supposed to be able to get close to their faces. The city of, Ro of Calais wanted Rodin to build these up on a pedestal, you know, so that we can look up there and honor and memorialize them. So Rodin had to make another version or it had to make a pedestal for those that are in Calais. And then he made other versions that just exist on the street, like the ones I'm walking around here in the Br Brooklyn Museum. And then in terms of content, we said each of them is in his own space, but look at their faces. They are facing imminent death. So each of them is just making this heroic sacrifice and you can kind of, you can read it on their very contemplative faces. All right, that's The Burgers of Calais by Auguste Rodin, made in 1884. It's made of bronze. And it's to honor the surrender of six burgers of Calais in the Hundred Years' War in France. Very realistic. <laughs>